Hello and welcome to the program. I am Deji Badimasi. A former aviation minister, Femi Fani Kayode, also known as FFK, has been in the news recently for launching a verbal attack on a journalist in Calabar, the Cross River State capital. So, FFK began a tour of South South and South East states last month, ostensibly to inspect projects by the governors of those regions. Now, during his visit to Cross River State, he had a session with journalists to brief them of his impression now of the governor and what he's done in the state. As the session progressed, a journalist asked the former minister who was bankrolling his trip. Of course, Fanny Kayode felt offended and completely lost it. Rather than answer the question, he rained a barrage of insults on the journalist, calling him unprintable names. Let's take a look at what actually transpired at that uh, press briefing now that the former minister called. Look, I'm saying this on live TV. What, no, put, put that thing now. Let me address. What type of stupid question is that? What type of stupid question is that? Bankrolling who? Do you know who you are talking to? Bank, I will not take any questions from this man. What type of insulting question is that? Which, which bankroll? For, to do what? Who can give me money for anything? Who do you think you are talking to? Bankroll what? Go and report yourself to your publisher. Bankroll what? Please don't insult me here. Okay, I don't want to take any questions from this man. Very stu I could see from your face before you got here how stupid you are. Don't ever talk to me like that. Who do you think you are talking to? Bankroll who? You think, you think that I, I, I'm one of those ones you'll be... From who? From how? When? Where? How? You have a small mind. Very small mind. Don't judge me by your own standards. I've been in politics since 1990. I'm not one of these politicians you think will just come. I was taking, I've been locked up how many times by this government? Suffered. I've been persecuted. Unlike most of the politicians you follow for brown envelope. You. Don't, don't ever judge me by that standard. I spend, I don't take. And I'm not a poor man. I've never been and I'll never be. Bankroll how? Don't ever suggest that to me. I'm, I'm sorry that it was deeply insulting. I don't often get annoyed in press conference. I've been doing this type of thing for many, many years. Don't you ever make that kind of suggestion to me. Sorry, sir. Thank you, sir, for your time. Sir. Bankroll, who a former minister, a lawyer. Sorry, sir. He got his language. Don't ever try that with me again. No. Don't, please. You see me well. Don't ever. All right? I have a short fuse. Okay? Sorry. Don't. Try it with others, don't. I won't just say right now. I will hit you hard, don't. And if anybody sent you to ask that question and gave you brand new, go and tell them you got more than they bargained for to do it. Very rude. It's not the standard of daily trust at all. And I will report you to your publisher. Thank you. Any other questions? Imagine that. Somebody has been on the road for how long? You are coming to talk about that. Very stupid. Well. There you have it again. Apparently, it's not the first time FFK will be lashing out at journalists. A similar incident actually happened in Zamfara State, uh, but somehow he got away with that. But this time, you can as well see a lock actually ran out of him, uh, the, you know, based on the reactions uh, we have seen all over the country. Let's discuss this further now. Joining me uh, to, to, to take a deeper look at this is Agba Jalingo, who is a journalist and also an activist and is the publisher of uh, Cross River Watch. That's an online publication based in Cross River State. We also have Kasim Akinreti, who is the chairman of the National Union of Journalists, Lagos State Council, and Emmanuel Ogbeche, who is the chairman of uh, the NUJ FCT chapter. He joins us uh, in Abuja. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for coming on the program. And um, <clears throat> I think I should start with, uh, let's start with the NUJ chairman in, in Lagos. Um, uh, Kasim, you, you, you saw that. What, what was your initial reaction? What was your first reaction when you saw that video for the first time? Well, uh, thank you very much. I was extremely angry. Honestly, I was living with anger because I don't expect such a comment from, uh, you know, obviously a former minister. And Well, he says he's a lawyer. I'm a journalist and I'm proud to be a journalist. But I, I think I think yeah, yeah, he went too far, and, and it's not a ground driven type of the cultural heritage of an Ipe man. I'm, I'm from Bife, so 
I, I expect him, you know, we are extremely cautious. So he went too far in trying to dehumanize, you know, a person. No, for if, uh, if he's not even a journalist, let, let's, let's just be realistic. You demonize him as a person. And then you, de you, you, de you, de you know, undignify his profession. I think he's quite unacceptable. And I, I'm, I'm so harassed by all the colleagues sitting down there, just sitting down there. And even himself, Charles Ayo, not to have worked work out on him. And I also tell um, uh, Panika Ode to his face that who do you think you are, you are also? But he just, he just, he never said that. He just, he sat on my, honestly, I felt so bad. And it was really a sad day for journalism. In in, in, indeed, 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 a very sad day for, John, for journalism in this country. No, no, it's quite regrettable that he did that. So all this apology doesn't count. It shows that he's hot tempered. It shows that he cannot even manage the you know, temper. And he cannot even, you know, I mean, he quietly address a simple question. It's not the job of a journalist to ask patronizing questions. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to come back to you. Let, let me just pause you there and bring in the uh, chairman of the NUJ FCT chapter now, uh, Emmanuel Ogbeche. Uh, Emmanuel, it, it must have been very shocking when you saw the video. Exactly. I, I, I was um, at first shocked. Then it became one of um, angst. Not particularly at um, Mr. Femi Fani Kayode, but about uh, my colleagues that sat through that humiliating um, period. <clears throat> I, I just felt so gutted that any human being could be reduced to such um, a level. It wasn't so much about Charles Ayo at that time. He speaks to the general um, um, conduct of um, the political and economic elite that believe that the journalist is an expendable and therefore the, he, can, he or she can be used <coughs> as much as the individual in question desires. Hmm. You understand? It also speaks to the general poverty, not just material, but also of integrity and conduct because one would have imagined that when the outburst was ongoing, if um, you decide not to retort, which ordinarily I wouldn't have advised, everybody that was a journalist in that, um, at that press conference should have worked out. That was the honorable thing to do. But by and large, it has happened. Um, I think that um, a warning signal has been sent to each and every one of us, as well as the political and economic elites, that enough is enough, that there is a measure in which a man can take. And it is All about right. time that I think we have had enough of the shenanigans. Okay, I'm, I'm still going to come back to you because I also want us to examine the, the role of the NUJ in all of this. The kind of response we've seen from the NUJ, is it enough? But uh, just before we come to that, let me go to Agba Jalingo. Uh, Jalingo, that actually happened in your state, Cross River State. Um, just give me your take on it. Um, well, I should say first and foremost that um, when I saw the tape, in fact, I got that information the day it happened because that tape was delayed. It came out uh, days after the incident happened. Mm. It was Charles Ayo himself that called me on the phone and told me how um, Femi Fani Kayode berated him at the conference. But like it is my own standard, I insisted on getting an audio or a video of the event because we were neatly etched out of the program. In fact, if you see the set of people that they had on that table, I know all of them. Uh, those are the ones that were considered by the CPS as media organizations in the state that are friendly with the government. Mm. Because there are people even within the correspondent chapel that they will never call for any government house press conference again, not to talk about the larger NUJ. So for them, those were the people that were supposedly friends of government. That is why they were selected. They were just a few set of people. And to see that outburst there was even surprising for me because uh, it was expected to be a very, very soft ground for Fanny Coyote. So I wasn't surprised. That is the way the profession has actually been reduced to in Cross River State. And I must tell you that Fanny Coyote was just lashing on what he has been doing. 
Like you mentioned Zamfara, but that was not even the only one. In May this year, earlier in May, he was talking with um, Arinze of uh, Ben TV in London on a Zoom conference. He still called him stupid. And I think that is one of the most uh, familiar words with Femi Fanikayude. And I usually don't take him serious. And like the chairman in Abuja said, the people I blame are people who were at that location, that particular time, who failed to stand up who, who went to, to defend uh, because them. Because you said, and, and I think it's just good we just mention names here. Mm. Uh, you know, who were the journalists? Since you say you know them, who were the journalists at of that course, press the, the, the chairman of the, the... It was quite embarrassing that they were begging Fanny Kayode and apologizing to him while he was raining insult, not just on Charles Ayo, but on all of them. Yeah, there's a, a small circle of journalists that have been created there. They call it the Government House Press Corps. The chairman is there, Rashid um, Olarewaju. He's the correspondent for EIT. He was there. I saw him. He's the one that was dressed in red. Then I also saw George Odok. He's the correspondent for the news agency of Nigeria. In fact, he's the one that was telling Charles Ayo that you see your life. You see your life. Can I you did not that? do. Yeah, that's the correspondent for the news agency of Nigeria. And a couple of others that I can't uh, pick their faces right away. But um, like I said, my initial reaction was, I, I called even George. I said, George, was that your voice? You were telling your colleague, you see your life. <laughs> and, well, for the, my, the respect to them, let me just um, not go too far in berating them, uh, DG. What I want to say is that it's a, a systemic problem that has uh, come over NUJ all over the country. Apart from maybe the Lagos chapter of NUJ, which once in a while takes up some challenges all over the country. Please, let me say it clearly, because I have two state chairmen here. Mm -hmm. Uh, with me on air, that the N uh, NUJ has become more of a parastatus of uh, governments in power across the 36 states of the Federation. And something more fundamental needs to be done for us to reclaim our respect from uh, this politician. Uh, uh, let, let me just pause you there because we're going to talk about... Let me go to uh, Emmanuel Ubeche, who is the chairman of the NUJ chapter uh, in the FCT. Uh, Emmanuel, your reaction to um, the way the National Union, I'm talking about the national body of the NUJ now, reacted after that video came out. I, I, your concern has been raised uh, by quite a few number of persons. First of all, the NUJ needed to be very clear as to what transpired before it uh, responded. If you say um, his, um, the response was not far-reaching, I, I I disagree with you. First of all, um, the national um, secretariat did condemn what Fanny Kayode said about the journalists, and also called them. Um, Let's go back to you, Kasim. Uh, your, your reaction to the way the NUJ has responded to this. I'm talking about the national NUJ. Well, first of all, the NUJ condemned the action. Which is, which is quite okay. And then the follow-up actions you have to follow uh, how to come up. Because uh, as, as a body, you also need to get a full briefing from your, uh, from your local chapter, the state chapter of the NUG. Um, and that is exactly, I think, what will happen. You can see that we have a other variety of friends, other issues that are started coming up. And all of us across, across the back. Had to also give it back to, uh, and I think uh, the, the reality is that uh, NUJ must also now start to talk about the county, talk about our police, who are and that is more. Okay, uh, unfortunately, your your audio is not too good. We're we're going to take a short break, and uh, we'll, we'll be right back. So let's take a short break, and we'll come back to continue the discussion. On DG 360, we don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. The constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. While we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need to make informed judgment so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason oh. why this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that team. Uh, DG 360, providing clarity to issues. 
All right, welcome back. And if you've just joined us, you're watching DG360. And uh, tonight we are discussing the outburst now by Femi Fani Kayadi, the former minister of aviation in Nigeria. And I still have um, Agwa Jalingo, who is the publisher of Cross River Watch with us. And uh, we have Emmanuel Ogbeche, who is the chairman of the FCT branch. Um, that's the FCT branch now of the NUJ. Unfortunately, we do not have Kasim any longer. The network would not allow us to continue with him. And so we're just going to continue with the discussion. So, I Emmanuel, I, I, I did ask you about the, the reaction, the response we have seen from the NUJ. And, um, of course, you were speaking on that before you were interjected by Kasim. <laughs> Yes, um, I, I know that uh, people have a different perception as to how um, the NUJ should have reacted. There were those that felt that there should have been a blanket um, a media black, blackout for Mr. Fanny Coyote. But I think. Uh, but don't you think that would have been an appropriate response? We do not kill an artist. You know, we are operating a very fragile democracy. We must be very careful not to uh, give the government the opportunity to clamp, do clamp down on those it feels are not in its good books. No, but, but how, how, to be hold on now, just, just hold on. Been, um, how, how would, how would it, how would, for instance, the NUJ coming out to say, look, you know, for this period of time, uh, we're placing a blanket, uh, uh, you know, blackout now on Fanny Coyote. We're not going to cover anything about him. How would that amount or how could that lead to the government clamping down on the media? What I'm saying is, don't you think the NUJ should have sent a stronger message? Because, for instance, the NUJ in a bomb state decided not to cover his activity in that state when he visited. But that was the decision of the local chapter. It's the kind of response you would have expected from the national chapter. Well, um, you and I, you are not so sure if the national secretariat of the NUJ was not um, contacted before the Aquaibon Council decided to embark on uh, the measure it has taken. You understand? The NUJ is... Um, a multi-level um, organization or association. But, but what, we, we, we is it difficult? Which, which is difficult? Uh, which is difficult? Sorry to interject, but which is difficult to contact the various chapter or just to make it open and just make a, a, a clear and open announcement that, you know what, henceforth or for so and so period of time, the media, I'm saying that that's what I... I Personally, I had expected now from the NUJ that the media should place a blackout on the activities of Femi Fani Kaudi. Well, like I said, we, we all have our perceptions. We must critically balance um, individual rights against that of, um, of um, others. It, as much as it hurts each and every one of us about the very bad conduct of Mr. Fani Kayode. We must be very careful not to set a dangerous precedent where, by because somebody has hurt us, we create a room for further abuse by the state. If you decide that, okay, the next two months there should be a blackout and the state decides to go against or go for him, what happens? Will you still guarantee his right to opinion, however, um, hopefully it has been. You understand? This is a, um, a first. The others were not um, widely reported or brought to the attention of the union. I think it is a learning curve and uh, we've all gained experience from this. I, let me confess, would have acted um, differently from the route that has been taken by the National Secretariat. You understand? Because um, I made it very clear that if it were in Abuja, we would have taken a more decisive um, um, decision on how to respond to it. But the decision has been made by the national, and I think um, we all accept it in good faith, even if we do not entirely... All right. 
accept I'm, I'm, what I'm, uh, the I'm National still going, Secretary I'm still said. going to come back to you because uh, whether we like it or not, uh, at some point uh, in time, uh, the former aviation minister would definitely be holding an event in Abuja. So it will be interesting to see how your union, your chapter now would react if the minister was to call a press conference, for instance, in, in Abuja tomorrow. But, but I'm, I'm going to come back to you on that. Um, Jalingo, you, you, you've heard his explanation. And um, are you satisfied with that? Because uh, the, for, for me, the, 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 what I feel is that the, the NUJ's response uh, did not go far enough. Well, um, DJ, I want to say, with due respect to the Acquire Bomb chapter of the union, that um, the first line in the press statement that uh, Etuk signed said, in line with the directive of the National Secretariat, and that is why they took that decision to boycott Femi Fani Kayode. Uh, maybe that presupposes that um, that directive was actually from the National Secretariat. National Secretariat. Yeah, but if you ask me, I don't even know why we should black out a Fanny Kayode. Presently, Fanny Kayode does not hold any position. He doesn't have any public position. In fact, as a matter of fact, he's an interloper. Why is he inspecting projects? As who? He's just putting himself in a position where we now have to start talking about blanking him out as though he's a government official or he's an important character. I think that because they have spent so much money to garner followers on Twitter, on Facebook, everything they throw out there becomes controversy. Then if you look at the flip side, DJ, I should also say that the NUJ, maybe in the period that I have related with the organization recently, say in the past uh, 10, 15 years, has not been known to defend the interests of journalists. I say that with all sense of responsibility as somebody who has been a victim of NUJ's um, dereliction of duty. I was arrested and locked up in jail, and the NUJ wrote a statement disowning me. I'm talking about the state chapter. And the Crossover State chapter is, is woefully one of the most terrible branches in Crossover because it is headed by a civil servant, somebody who is an information officer in the Ministry of Sports under the payroll of the state governor. Every time the governor wants to address the press, you see him sitting, balancing on the table with government commissioners as if he is a government official who wants to brief his colleagues. That is the situation where NDA, uh, the NUJ has degenerated to in Cross River State. Even the chairman that handed over to him was also an information officer in the Minister of Information. So consecutively, about three or four of them in Cross River State, and they, there's an unwritten agreement, so to, so to say, that has uh, reserved the position of the NUJ chairman in Cross River State for government officials, civil servants, and that is deliberate to make sure that they kill the organization. And rather than defend the interest of a journalist, they are rather fighting every time to defend the position of government. Out of pressure, they had to write a statement, even though it's belated, asking media organizations in Cross River State to boycott government news. And then there is something they added in the last paragraph of their statement, that every association, organization, an individual that wants to hold a press conference in Cross River State must come and do it inside the NUJ Secretariat. And I've been laughing since when the press statement came as where they derived the powers from to tell anybody where to hold his or her press conference. But that is the politics that is more of interest to the leadership of the NUJ in Cross River State. In the past um, uh, two administrations that I can remember very vividly, we started in Cross River State and the biggest obstacle we had as online people in Cross River State was the NUJ. That was the reason why we went to register the Association of Cross River Online Journalists, to create an alternative media center in the state to give young people a breathing space to be able to practice this profession. Because they have bastardized it. They have reduced it to 3,000. Go to the NUJ Secretariat in Calabar. They share as little as 3,000, 5,000. Sit down there, idly away. I, and uh, when we talk about Charles Ayo, Charles is 53 years old with grown-up children that are graduates from school. He's not a child. And that is a man that Femi Fanikayode was shouting at. And his colleagues could not um, defend come, come, him. Come out to defend. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I will say again that the uh, NUJ should uh, up its game and see how, how much more they can do to defend the interests of journalists. But so far, so good. They have not demonstrated um, uh, that streak. And uh, look at um, what my colleague is saying there, that if they black out for me, Fanny uh, Kayode, the government will come after us. As if, if we don't blank him out, government is not coming after us. <laughs> Whether we blank Fanika Ede or we don't blank him out, as far as we continue to ask these pungent questions, politicians will always resent us. And the earlier we realize that, the better for us. What do you make of... Because we, I, I believe you have seen that in, in the social media, where some journalists, you know, some journalists who should know better are coming out to say the question that uh, Charles asked was embarrassing. 
Last uh, two weeks, I was watching a journalist uh, in a press conference with Donald Duke. Uh, I said Donald Duke, Donald Trump, the president of the United mm -hmm. States. And the journalist pointedly looked at Trump in the face and told him, "Say, Mr. President, do you regret and apologize for all the dishonesty and the lying that you have been doing to the American people in the past three years? And President Trump asked him, I said, who? He said, you, you, the lying and the dishonesty you have been doing to the American people. <laughs> and because Trump was uncomfortable with the question, he pointed to the next reporter and said, ask your next question. I want to imagine that if you were in Nigeria, the DSS would not allow you to leave that venue. But that is not Nigeria. I've also seen Shore ask um, Odoma Dwekwe a question in New York about his role in the Abacha government and how he was going about claiming to speak for Yaradua that was on the hospital bed for 30 days. Odoma Dwekwe fled up and called Shore a miserable man. And Shore told him, I said, no, I am not miserable. You are the one that is miserable. I certainly cannot be the one that is miserable. Now, journalism for me is the ability to write what others cannot write. I, 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 a veteran once told us that before, that every other thing is PR. It is just those questions that the politicians don't want you to ask. Those questions that they call stupid. Until you rise to the level where you can ask them those questions. For me, that is when you become a journalist. If you are not able to ask those stupid questions. Yes, it is our duty to ask stupid questions. If you like, call them stupid. Those questions are questions that deserve answers. Who is bankrolling you? Who is bankrolling you? Nobody is bankrolling me. It is me, myself. It's as simple as that. Will you regret for all the lying you have been doing to the American people? No, I have no regret. It's as simple as that, unless you have something that you are hiding. So when colleagues come out to say stupid questions, to say what Charles did was this and that, I look at it again, I said, the only pro problem, rather, that I had with Charles on that day was he also stood up and was saying, I'm sorry, I'm sir. sorry, yes. I'm sorry, sir. That was the only problem. Because I know that if I were in that venue, I sincerely will confess to Nigerians that I would not have tolerated that nonsense. Would you describe the kind of question that Charles Ayo asked? Would you describe that question as embarrassing? Because we've seen some journalists on social media who have actually come out to say that the question was embarrassing. Journalism is not an exception. I have had um, issues with those that... He needed to be a contrary, he needed to have asked the question in a manner that was not offensive. I do not belong to that school of thought. I sincerely believe that he was asked the difficult questions because we have the constitutional guarantee to hold government and its officials accountable. And you cannot do that when you ask the very comfortable questions, the easy questions. You know, but that said, let me take an um, exception to what um, Abba Jalingo said. I sympathize with him over his ordeal. I, he had never identified with the NUG in Cross River, which is uh, another kettle of fish. If I was the one, my colleagues can attest to that. I, I do not believe that he must belong to the NUJ as a journalist or, or as a media practitioner for your right to be defended by the union. I do not believe that. I can easily boast here in FCT that the NUJ is held in high regard because we have demonstrated uncommon leadership. It does not matter who you are. Once you are identifying as a journalist, we will come out all out to defend and to ensure that you're protected. Time to that number, we have brought people out from the DSS. We have engaged constructively with the police to ensure that our members are not harassed. And when they are, we do not let it lie low. We take it to the full measure of what is required. You understand? Um, my colleagues um, in Kosiba, I can't hold a brief for them why they decided to ask the way they did but <laughs> by and large well, I, but I, I understand your point but you know so that we do not deviate that. so that we do not deviate but uh, let, let's just stay the course I, I, I understand your point and uh, I think Jalingo understands mm. um, e everyone has learned from that so but also, uh, yeah go, go on but the question that Charles 
Can you ask the question that every journalist what is all should have asked? Because mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Fanny Kayode is not the national chairman of the PDP, is not an executive member of the PDP, is not a board of trustee member of the PT PDP as far as I know. And I wonder what utilitarian value he's bringing to bear to the state governors. You understand? That is mm -hmm. why I am overly disappointed with the PDP governors that he's been visiting. One would have imagined that You're just the prime minister governor would have asked him to, to hold his peace. One would have imagined that because tempers have flayed up and everybody was tense, that uh, that visit for whatever value it has to those who think it has any value at all should have waited. But by and large, we know that uh, we are operating in a very difficult climate in a state that is fragile. We have tried as much as possible to balance how we relate with government. Sometimes we fall short, the, the union falls short on the expectations of the public. At other times, it rises above the occasion. So we must continue to evolve gradually. And we ask that people that I establish should also provide mentorship to journalists that are coming up. There are people that feel that um, those in the union are lackeys of government, they are justified to do so because it is not all the time you find those that are responsible. It is the kind of society we live in regrettably. All right. Unfortunately, we, we have a problem with uh, Emmanuel Obeche's uh, audio though again, but let me come back to you, Jalingo. Yeah. Emmanuel did raise a very important point that I've also asked myself over the past uh, few days now. Um, Chief Femi Fanikade is not the PDP chairman, just as uh, Emmanuel said. He's not a government official. He's just an ordinary citizen. He's just an ordinary citizen. Yes, he was a former minister. So the question is, what validity was he going to confer on these governors he was visiting? What, what, what exactly? What, what value? Be because... Um, it's, it's not something we're used to here, that an individual will go around various states to say he is inspecting the projects of the governors and then call a press conference and is addressing the press over uh, his, his inspection and what have you. So it's, and it's, it's, it's of course, I understand it's of course why, these, uh, why Charles Sayo asked him that question because, you know, for one to just use his own money, go around, inspecting projects, and then the question is, to what purpose? I, I wish I was in uh, Uyo. I would have taken the opportunity to also see Fanika Ede to ask him who is bankrolling him. Because like you said, if, if I am not you, I will ask him on this program, Fanika Ede, who is bankrolling you? You would describe him as just an individual. I want to add that just an individual that is standing corruption trial. So I'm wondering elsewhere, if somebody is standing trial for corruption, you will not even want to associate with that person until he's able to clear his name mm. from those kind of those sort of scandals. And then for particularly my own governor, I described his association with uh, Fanica Ode as um, the dance of two of a kind. Because you yourself must be crooked. You must be, you must be insensitive to accountability for you to associate with a combustible character like, um, like Femi Fani And like you asked, inspecting projects in Cross River as who? We walk in Cross River, we live there. Those of us who are Cross Riverians, we have a verdict on Governor Yadi. Some believe that he is doing well, particularly those that are working for him. But the majority of Cross Riverians feel that after five years, he has not been able to live up to expectations. We don't need a Femi Fani to come from Motion State or from Abuja to come and tell us what Governor Yade has done in Calabar or elsewhere in Cross River State. He doesn't have the capacity to. Those of us who live there, those of us who this governor is serving, those who voted for Governor Yade, those who voted for Governor Dom have their eyes. They can see what their governor is doing. And that is exactly what the NUJ in Akwaibom told him today, that we are here on the ground. We don't need you to come and call us to a hall after walking around on a guarded trip to three or four places, you come and sit us down to tell us how Governor Yadi and Odom have done well. I think he's just <laughs> a busybody interloper. I know Cross River better than uh, Femi Fanikayode. I have been reporting Cross River for the past nine years, every day of my life. 
I know where the, all the projects that Governor Yade claims that he's doing are located. And I don't think that it is a Femi Fanica Yade that will come and stay in Crossover after three days and then you call a press conference to come and tell me or the rest of us in Crossover what Governor Yade has done. All the money that was allegedly wasted to bring him to Crossover went down the drain by that one single moment of irresponsibility by the former minister. And uh, I think it's a lesson for the governor and the rest of them that he's still going around to visit. To be candid, I do not see any reason why. I mean, th there's nothing wrong if, if you want to go visit your friend who is a mm -hmm. governor to say you want to go visit him and see what he's doing. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. But just go there, look at what he's doing, and that's it. Mm -hmm. But don't, don't go, go. I mean, went on an inspection inspection tour like the president of, of, of the country. As a commissioner of ins inspectors, commissioner of, inspections. It's, it's so... It's, it's so funny, and uh, it's, it's unfortunate. The way the journalists who conducted themselves at that press conference is quite disappointing. Uh, what personally I would have expected the journalists to do, of course, I would not expect them to exchange words with Mr. Fanny Coyote, but the most honorable thing they could have done to not just themselves, but the profession, their own profession, was to just take a walk, walk out of that hall, but they stayed there. And for Charles Ayo, it was absolutely unnecessary to be apologizing to the minister. Because when you do that, you give them the impression that you have really asked a stupid question, just as the minister said. But then that question was valid, absolutely valid. And it will always be valid any day, any time. So for the minister to have described the question as stupid and described the individual who asked that question as stupid, well, that former minister is quite a ridiculous character. And uh, it's, it's, it's really unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. And then the apology that he's issued. He's not issued an apology anyway, because people are sending, some people are sending this wrong impression that he's apologized. He's actually not apologized. Jalingo, I believe you saw what he put up. <laughs> Would you that, describe that as an apology? That wasn't, you see, Gani, Mfani Kayo did, was no apology. he doesn't have the capacity to sustain decorum. He can't even apologize. He's so full of himself. You, if you see the way he throws away that word, stupid, 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 you know he cannot apologize. If you read that later, he was just writing gibberish. And then at the end of the day, he told us he's proceeding to the next state. See, I, I usually don't like discussing uh, Femi Fanica. I, I, I respect Charles Ayo more than him. Charles is a 58, 53 years old man with children. He's a bishop in the Olumba Olumba sect. I have more respect for him than uh, Fanny Kayode. And that's a 53-year-old man. 53, that, actually. Yes, 53-year-old man that... Uh, Fanny Kayode called stupid. Yeah. That's quite unfortunate. And mm. then you ask yourself, even Fanny Kayode himself, how old is he? How old is he? Well, mm. it's on that note we end the program. Thank you very much, Jalingo, for coming on the program and for sharing your, a pleasure. Uh, your thoughts with us. And uh, uh, before now, of course, uh, we were joined from Abuja by uh, Emmanuel Ogweche, who is uh, the chairman of the NUJ chapter, and then Kasima Kinriti, the chairman of the Lagos NUJ chapter. Unfortunately, they're not here to finish the program with us. Network would not allow us to do that. But then we say thank you to everyone who's been a part of this program. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.